Someone praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We bless the Lord for the life and times of our sister. Very creditably sung and told here today. Um, when people like uh, our pastor or, or Joseph would live a life that touched others in a memorable way, like they say, it's not to die because they will always remember what your life meant to them while you were here. When we look into the scriptures, we find that uh, in that part of the Bible, in Genesis chapter 5, it is the man that lived the shortest that had the greatest testimony. Enoch lived the shortest. He was the only one that walked with God. Can somebody say amen to that? Yes, we come to celebrate the life of our sister. Yes, like uh, our brother said, tears are in order. Grief is in order. It's true. Such a lovely personality. Beautiful, charming, an impactful life. Yes, indeed. Tears are in order. But we must thank the Lord for the period she was with us and for the impact of her life. Someone praise the Lord. If I have listened carefully to everything that has been said here, I can sense that the testimony is consistent that our sister has gone to be with the Lord. And if I know anything about what her wish would be, it is that everyone who has attended this service one day to come to join her. Can somebody say amen to that? So as we bow our head to prayer, I want to speak very briefly on the seed, the seed of that reunion. Because everyone who is going to be in that reunion must have a seal. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you sent your son Jesus Christ into the world to provide this sure seal so that all who believe in him will spend eternity with you. Oh, may you open our eyes and open our hearts that we may truly receive him and walk with him every single day of our lives until we see you in glory. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, it's often that people ask you, why are you a Christian? Why are you a Christian? Why are you a Christian? I have had to address that question for myself. Why are you a Christian? I have... Um, I was born into a Christian family, but that's not why I'm a Christian. I have interviewed quite a number of people who hold other religions, who believe, believe in other religions or other faiths. They've always told me one thing, because the final question is, where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? And often, here, here are the, some of the things I've received, and many of them culminate in the same thing. When I die, I'm going to go before God. 
and they are going to put a scale, okay? And on the right side, they will put all the good I have done. Then on the left side, they will put all the evil that I have done. And then if I'm fortunate that my good weighs more than my evil, I will go to heaven. But if I am unfortunate that my evil weighs more than my good, I will go to hell. And I said to one lady, I said, but that would be a tragedy. Is there no way to guarantee that when it's all over, you will be with God? I said, no. In our religion, no. You just have to wait till that day. And if you're unfortunate enough that your evil weighs more than your good, you'll go to hell. And I said to her, I said, hell is not a pleasant place, you know. The way our Lord Jesus Christ described it, he said there is suffering that never ends. He said the worm never dies. The worm never dies. Now, I do not want anyone here under the sound of my voice to take such a chance. Don't take such a chance. The reason is because if you go through the Bible, you will see how God has worked out everything. Nothing is by accident. He created man and made us in his own image. The man failed according to the scriptures. And then he made a plan. He made a plan for the day of redemption so that you and I can return to God. Now, here is the plan. He gave Moses the law. And in that law, he said that when you sin, you should bring a goat, put your hand on the goat, confess all your sins, and then kill the goat and bring the blood to the altar so that God will see the blood and then the blood will be a covering for your sin. But you know, that wasn't the intent of God to make the church a good business so that people could sin anyhow they like and on Saturday or Sunday bring a goat to church and transfer all their sins. No. The essence of that was to produce people who feared God and who lived godly lives on the earth. That's the essence of it. But it failed. It failed woefully. It failed. And so the Bible said that our Lord Jesus Christ, who was God from eternity, he became a man. John chapter 1, 14. And the word became flesh. And he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten son of God, full of grace and truth. Now, now, why did Jesus become a man? It's just so that you and I can be saved. He was born of virgin birth and he lived a life that is completely sinless. The Bible says he was tempted in every way just like we are and yet without sin. And what was the purpose? So that when he died, his blood will provide not just a covering for the sins of those who believe, but then he will purge their conscience from evil so that they can live godly lives that glorify God. Why is it important to emphasize that? Because as I look at so many of us that are here, you, many of us already have an idea what Christianity is all about, what salvation is all about. But what we need to know is that we have been called to lead godly lives. We have been called to lead godly lives. It's not just to come to church, bring an offering. David said, if you desire sacrifice, I will bring it. But the sacrifice you desire is a penitent heart. Now, where do we get the seal? This is the way it works. Okay? The Bible says the wages of sin is death, the free gift of God, it's eternal life. Now, when you in acknowledgement of the fact that you recognize that you're a sinner and you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you repent of your sins, 
And that's a word everyone needs to understand. Because to repent is to turn. Nobody repents without turning. Once you repent, you turn away from sin. And you begin to lead a godly life, a righteous life. So, when you repent of your sin, turn away from evil and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. In all sincerity, the Bible says that faith in your heart produces righteousness for you. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. It is what you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin that makes you righteous before God. Okay, And then when you begin to confess it to men that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, you begin to confess it before men. The Bible says you confirm your salvation. And that's why those who say, well, are you a Christian? Are you born again? Do you belong to Jesus? Well, sort of. Ah, that sort of will not save you. What you need is a firm confession Jesus Christ is my Lord. I, serve, I love him and I serve him. And I will follow him all the days of my life. So the Bible says that when you do that, this is where the mystical union takes place. And I want everybody to pay very close attention to this. What happens when you do that is that the Holy Spirit of God reconnects with your spirit the human spirit in you, and establishes that relationship. And that's why the Bible tells us in Romans 8.16 that the spirit of God, he bears witness with our spirit that we have become children of God. Nobody can face death with confidence with, without that assurance. That's why we're singing about our sister. Nobody can face death with confidence without that assurance given by the Holy Spirit that you have become a child of God. Now, I come to my subject. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. The Bible says, don't grieve. Do not grieve that Holy Spirit. You see, the moment he comes and, and connects, he doesn't come and go. He comes and is resident. Okay? That spirit is resident. And the Bible says, don't grieve him because he is the seal. He is the seal. When that final day of redemption comes, that spirit is the seal. Don't grieve him. The reason the Bible warns us there is that if you grieve him, he may leave you. And we have record in the book of Judges that when he leaves you, you may not know he has left. That's the tragedy. Now, why is it necessary to know this? Because our Lord Jesus Christ says to us that when that gathering, you know, with Shehu and all the departed saints, on that day, the Bible says the people who will be doing the, the selection and, 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 and sending the sheep and the goats to the right and left. The people who will be doing that. The Bible says they are angels. Say so they are angels, not human beings. And what will they be looking for? It is that seal. It is that seal. And you see, when the angels see that seal, they know exactly who owns you and where you are going to end up. And that's why it is so important to know about the seal. Because that's the final, final recognition for everyone who wants to go to heaven. And that's why I would like to say to you, do you have that seal? Do you have that seal? Perhaps you had it once. But then you, you fell back into the world. You fell back into sin. And you didn't even know you have lost it. That's why it's so important. Particularly looking at all the testimonies of those who had 
contact with our sister, her joy, her faith, her quiet confidence in her God. It is awesome to go out that way. I'm a doctor by profession. I have watched many people die. Okay? Some people, when they are dying, they are shouting, fire, 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 fire. I've heard that too. Some people, when they are dying, say, please help me, please help me, please help me. They're not sure. No, you can't afford that. You can't afford that. That assurance by the Holy Spirit is what you need. But yes, indeed, I'm a child of God. I have stayed faithful to my God all the way to the end. And I am confident that if I breathe my last, he will be waiting for me. That's what that seal is all about. And if in your life, perhaps, the pressures of life, the temptations of the devil, the snares of the world have taken you out, taken you away, Or you can restore that seal this afternoon and say to him, Lord Jesus, I want to be with you forever. Please look into my heart. This is the honest desire of my heart. And you know something? Once you make such a sincere prayer, this is the awesome thing about Jesus. Once you make such a sincere prayer, he will hear it, he will note it. Because I tell you, the day I gave my life to Christ, I didn't answer the altar call. I didn't uh, kneel down. Nobody prayed for me, no. Actually, I was going home. And then as I was going home, I heard that voice. I heard that voice. He said to me, go and write your name down. That's where you belong. Go there. That's where you belong. So I went back. And I wrote my name down. That's how I got saved. Because that night, I heard a voice in a dream say to me, Get up, read John 6.20. And that scripture said, it is I, be not afraid. And that voice and I, we have traveled the world ever since. That can also be your testimony if it is not already. That you hear that voice all the time telling you, stay the course, stay on the path that is narrow. Don't let the world sweep you away so you miss eternity. One of the greatest tragedies is the story that our Lord Jesus Christ told in John in the Matthew chapter 7. He said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, you know, will come into the kingdom of God, but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. And then he said, in that day, he said, in that day, many are going to come and say, Lord, we attended church. Mm Mm-hmm. Lord, we were part of the evangelistic team. Mm-hmm. Lord, we, had, we performed miracles in your name. Mm-hmm. Is that it? You say, yes. You say, I don't know you. That's, awesome. That's terrible. Say, he didn't say, I, I, I judge their works and, 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 and they're not up to scratch. No, he said, I don't know you. That's what tells you that that seal is very critical. Because that seal is for those he knows until that final day. Oh. Our sister lived a wonderful life listening to all the testimonies. And I'm sure her departure will provide a void for everyone who knows him, particularly Dukwe and her two daughters. But now we, we have that comfort that uh, when a Christian passes away, it is good night. It is not goodbye. A man had a family of three, a wife and three children. He had a fatal accident and was dying. So he called his wife and said, my dear, it's been a wonderful journey together. Good night. He called one of the children Good night. He called another child. Good night. Then he came to the third child. 
said, goodbye. And the boy said, daddy, good night, good night, good night, goodbye. Why? He said, because we will not see each other again. Tragically. When you die, you go to a different place. And Abraham said, there is no connection. The people on our side can pass to your side. The people on your side can come here. My prayer is that everyone who has truly and genuinely given their lives to Christ will be able to say confidently, Shemu, good night. But we shall meet in the morning. As we bow our heads to pray, I want you to say to him, Oh Lord my God, I need that seal. I need that seal. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I repent and turn away from my sins. By your grace, I will follow you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving me. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone who has said this prayer from the depth of their heart that your Holy Spirit will become the seal on their lives until that final day of redemption. Lord, if there be any that have backslidden, whom you have restored today, may that seal also be restored. But when life is over, everyone that has received that seal, we have the assurance that we will spend eternity with you. Lord, may the spirit of comfort rest on everyone that grieves, particularly Sharon's husband and children. May you be their comfort every single moment henceforth. Thank you for hearing us. We give you praise and glory. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And now if you have prayed to receive that seal. I want you to know that uh, you can come to the church or go to any Bible believing church and make that confession known publicly. Make it known publicly. Amen.